Welcome to the Secret Sauce Podcast. This is a show about relationships with staff, with students, with yourself, with building culture in your classroom, your school, your district, and becoming personally developed so that you can be professionally developed. Be sure and follow our podcast so you don't miss a show. And we're booking now for the 23-24 school year um, for any type of PD that you need, keynotes, seminars, workshops, just get in touch with me. I would love to come to your to your school, your district, and share the secret sauce with you. So let's jump right into the next episode. Here we go. Hey, welcome to the Secret Sauce Podcast with Kip Schubert. This is episode number 36, and I've got a special guest um, this afternoon, and it's Dr. Brandy Kelly. She is a fellow Road to Awesome author um, with me, and Dr. Kelly has over 20 years in education. She is currently a superintendent in Mount Olive, Illinois. She's been a principal for 10 years um, be- uh, before she became a superintendent. And before that, she was a school social worker and counselor. So, Brandy, uh, welcome to the show. Kip, thanks for having me on tonight. You bet. Um, so let's just dive right into it. Um, okay. We've talked a little bit before in our mastermind and and with being authors with the Road to Awesome family, and but share with the listeners kind of how you came to be an educator. What's the story behind that? Okay. So Kip, about the time I was, I was 15 years old, I guess, um, our family faced a tragedy. Um, it was a rainy May day in 1990 and I was getting ready for prom. My mom and dad were both at work and I have two brothers and both of my brothers decided to go on a horseback ride that day. Um, unfortunately, only one brother came home. And at that point in time, we just knew that he had f- fallen in the creek. Um, we really didn't know what had happened to Brandon. Um, to make a long story short, the community, my family, um, so many people went out to that creek on that Saturday afternoon in May. And they looked for Brandon all night. Um, they looked for him on Sunday, which was Mother's Day, and they finally found him on Monday. And the way that our school community rallied around our family is really why I'm an educator today. Um, they brought a bus to Brandon's funeral to, um, so that those kids, his classmates could go to the funeral. And the support that they provided, the teachers, the staff, the students, the families, I just, I can't say enough about it. It was just amazing to to us. And that support was um, what really helped us to get through that tragedy. And so I just knew I had to pay it forward. And so um, I didn't even know school social workers existed back then, but whenever I went to college and I learned of that profession, that's how I decided to pay it forward. And that was my first job in education. And um, through the years, I've had the opportunity to help a number of families um, who have also dealt with grief and loss and those kinds of tragedies. And, um, you know, I feel very blessed to be able to pay it forward in that way and to help others um, and turn our tragedy into good. Uh, and thank you for sharing about that. I know that that's got to be difficult, even when you tell about it, you relive it. And, um, but it's just so awesome, isn't it? How, I mean, we have family, right? Blood family and DNA, mm-hmm. but as educators in our school communities, it, to me, it's just been so awesome to see in all the districts I've been in, that it's just really, is just a family atmosphere and you grow so close to become like a, mm-hmm. a second family to you. Oh, so yeah. you, Absolutely. so, and so you, you talk about your, your tragedy and, and, and your trauma and how you've taken that and, and turned it to good. Mm-hmm. And I call that struggle to strength. And so yeah. share a little bit more about, um, if you want to, your, your, the trauma with your brothers and, and really mm-hmm. how that has empowered you to build relationships as an educator, you know, mm-hmm. as a social worker, a counselor, as a principal, and now as a superintendent. Yeah. Yeah. So as I shared, you know, Brandon went into that creek that day and he never came home. He passed away. And my other brother, Dustin, was there with him. 
he was 10 years old at the time. He witnessed that. I really don't know what he witnessed, Kip, but I know that he witnessed Brandon going under. Right. And the the creek carried him about a mile down. Well, Dustin took off and he ran. He ran to to our house and he um, he came to get help. Um, At 10 years old, that made such an imprint on him. Um, And I've always seen Dustin as somebody who has experienced trauma. And watching him go through that, I think, is what empowered me. Um, Because, you know, my mindset was the difficulties, the adversity, the things that are hard for us in life can either make us better or they can make us bitter. Um, For Dustin, unfortunately, his path looks very different than mine. Um, He's doing better than he has in the past, but he struggled. And, you know, I think life is all about choices. And for me, developing strength and perseverance and grit is what I gained from this tragedy and this trauma. And my story, Dustin's story, Um, My mom later passed away from cancer and now my dad has Parkinson's and, you know, all these experiences in life, these adversities in life, um, we wish they were different. We wish we didn't have to go through these hard times, but each and every day I choose to use these struggles to get better and, and to share my story and to help others do the same. And when you walk through life and you share your story like that, you find people that have they've dealt with the same things. You know, we're more similar than we are different. And I think we can not only gain strength from what we've gone through, but we can share that with others and be stronger together. Yeah. I'm glad you shared that because I'm, I relate a lot to that. You know, I'm a lot like Dustin in, in my story, especially from the first 46 years of my life. And you're right. It's so much about choices. We have, cho- yeah. we have, I mean, our, one, things I, one thing I say all the time is our greatest, one of our greatest powers is the power of choice. Oh, yeah. And um, it, it, it's interesting to me how people will go through that trauma and go through those struggles. And some choose like you and, and, and I have to get that perseverance and that grit. And I mean, I really mm-hmm. got those. I mean, I relate so much to you on that because I learned that so much from mine. And, and then some people just can't seem to to come to grips with that and uh, you know maybe he's he feels guilty because he ran home and didn't stay you know or you know there's so much that goes into all that kind of stuff and so you the thing i love about what you said though is when we go through those struggles and we come out on the other side we always come across people who are going through the same thing and yeah. you know i call it reaching back over that mountain and mm-hmm. and it's there's so much purpose in it and if we see it if we choose to see the good out of it like you have, uh, you know, it's just, to me, it brings meaning to it, you know, and yeah. even all the past things that I, that I dealt with and went through, if I don't share that and, and help other people like you, like you're doing as an educator too, mm-hmm. to me, it, I waste all that, all that trauma that I went through or, or that I cause other people. So. Yeah. Yeah. I love and, that Kip. I, uh, I think it is, it's important that we bring meaning to it. I mean, we, as human beings, we're always trying to find the purpose, trying to find the why. And whenever we share our stories, um, I think that's that's how we find the meaning in, in this trauma and yeah. in this tragedy and trauma. It, it binds us together, and um, it does. Thank you for sharing that. You know, when you mm-hmm. uh, when you sent me your bio, I was reading through it, and there's one thing that really stuck with me. Kind of getting back on the the educator track is that you, you talked about relationships are incredibly important to the learning process. And especially, I know in my district and across this country, I think we're missing that part. Can you yeah. just kind of um, elaborate on that and, and, and what you mean by that? Yeah, well, starting out as a school social worker, you know, um, that relational piece was always so important. Um, I had a student years ago She was in junior high when I started working with her and I would go to Effingham junior high school and I would meet with this student. And for probably the first three or four sessions, she didn't say anything. And she told me 
the only thing she did say to me in those early sessions was, I've had counselors before. I'm not going to talk to you. You're not going to be able to, to um, help me. Um, you're wasting your time. But I just kept coming back and I just kept showing up. And I didn't know if it was ever going to matter or not. But one day, I think I brought her a Big Mac of all things. <laughs> and she and I started talking and she started telling me about her struggles. She started talking to me about, um, you know, in junior high, the relationship she was having, the um, alcohol and drug use that she was experimenting with. And, you know, that kiddo, for whatever reason, we connected and she and I stuck together. She, she went to alternative schools. I think she went through three alternative schools. I went and visited her. Um, many years later, we're now Facebook friends. That's one of the good things about Facebook. And I asked her, I said, I said, why did, why did, um, what was it about our relationship that worked? You know, I was just curious about it. And that's exactly what she told me. She said, you just kept showing up. You wouldn't go away. And she said, and I appreciated that. And um, it really mattered to me. And, and, and that's the power of relationships. It's just, yeah. you don't have to do anything amazing. You just have to show up. You have to care. And you have to um, let these kids know that you're going to be there for them through thick and thin. Because that sense of belonging is just a basic need. Looking at Maslow's hierarchy of needs, that sense of belonging is so important. And I think post-pandemic, that's what our kids need more than anything else, is they Absolutely. need to know someone cares and that they belong and they matter. Yeah, that's just, that's an awesome story. That's the magic in what we do, right? Oh, it's just, it is. It's just, it's just those moments because every moment matters and I mean, you earned the right to hear that girl's story. Mm -hmm. You just, you just saw her, you, you heard her, and you just loved her. And, yeah. and I know that you did such a great thing for her. But when we do those things, I know that that brought a lot of great things back, you know, to you too, because you probably saw your brother and her mm -hmm. a little bit. I mean, oh, it's just, gosh, that, yeah, yeah and it's just, yeah. man, there's just so much magic in that, and as being an educator. Mm -hmm. And I think, I think a lot of times as, as educators, we forget about that, right? We get mm -hmm. caught up in the data and the testing and the climate and the political yeah. stuff. And I mean, there's just so much going on and there's so much for us to do. And mm -hmm. that's, I mean, that is the, what you did with that, that girl, that's the secret sauce. That's, what yeah. I mean, that's, that is amazing. Yeah. And you're, you're exactly right. It's magical whenever you can connect with a kid like that. And it's so healing in so many ways. And I think as educators, we get as much out of it as we give. Yeah, exactly. I was sharing that with, with my team tonight before I came mm -hmm. over to do the podcast. Is remember, mm -hmm. remember what our measure is. It's not about what we get. It's not a scoreboard or a record. It's what we give. So right. that, is, right. that is awesome. So yeah. staying on that relationship piece, and that was mm -hmm. a, that's just such a powerful story with that young lady. Um, who is someone, maybe one or two people that have really had a profound effect on you as an educator and, or, and even as just Brandy um, yeah. with your relationship with them. Yeah. And I think about those relationships, you know, throughout my life and there's been so many, um, but thinking about a teacher, um, this turned out to be a very positive story, but um, I got married right out of high school. I married my high school sweetheart. And I remember in one of my classes, um, I got engaged as a senior in high school. That sounds crazy now as I think back on that. But the teacher told me, you will never amount to anything. And she may not have used those words, but that's what I heard. And, you know, by her saying that, that was powerful. And that was motivation for me. I think I've been in school ever since. I have been propelled and driven to prove her wrong. And along the way, it fostered a love of learning. I love to learn. I love to go to school. I love to um, 
interact with, you know, that, that uh, professional dialogue. But she helped me in a lot of ways. People may not see it that way, but I choose to see that as a blessing. Um, but, you know, another person that I have to, to point to is um, my mom. Um, my mom was uh, somebody who dropped out of high school. Neither of my parents graduated from high school, um, but they both went on and they started their own business. Um, I think about my mom. She she dropped out of high school and then later went back and became a cosmetologist. And I think she was the strongest woman I've ever known. Uh, she was a fighter and she had a heart for helping others, uh, especially the underdog, the underprivileged. Um, she had a passion for that. I saw her go through a number of struggles in her life. I mean, losing a child, I can't even imagine. And, and I remember those days very well. Um, there was about a year where she cross-stitched my brother's picture. And uh, it took her a while to heal from that. And then about nine years later, she was diagnosed with, with cancer. And she passed away in 99. And that was probably the, the battle that um, was most difficult for her. But that battle was heartbreaking and inspiring at the same time. So I'd have to say that my mom was probably the single most important relationship that I've had. And she's impacted me in so many ways, both personally and professionally. And that's just, and you're, number one, your, your story is, is amazing. It's, it's off the charts. Um, I mean, my dad's my hero. He's had the most profound effect on me too. And um, as a parent, but I, going back to that teacher, um, yeah. Sometimes it's not about proving them right; it's about proving them wrong. You know? Yeah. And yeah. Have you ever thought about going back to that teacher and like showing her your superintendent certificate and like yeah. saying saying, wasn't that hard? <laughs> you know? <laughs> <laughs> it's just, yeah. Uh, that, I would love to. I would love to have that conversation with her. But you know, at the end of the day. And this is what's so crazy. She was one of my favorite teachers. Really? She was an amazing person. She was um, amazing at forming relationships. And I know that what she said was in no way meant to have any ill intent. Right. She, and who knows, she may have known my personality well enough to know that she needed to say that to give me the best chance That's true. and to motivate me to be the best I can be. And, and I have to assume that positive intent because yeah. I really did think very, very highly of this teacher. And I still do. Um, awesome. I do. I credit, I credit her in a, in a lot of ways for um, the successes that I've had in life and just having that motivation because it's not always easy. You know, I, I got married. I had um, a child and then I went to school. I was going to be a nurse. And then... Um, after, oh, about a year in school, got into the nursing program. I got pregnant again. So um, kind of took a detour and then went into education. So yeah. everything happens for a reason. It does. And I mean, you're, you're spot on about that teacher, too. And I think sometimes as, as educators, you know, even with, whether it was then or it's today, sometimes mm -hmm. we can get so stuck in a mindset or a perception because that's the way we think it's always been yeah. and a kid a kid comes out something different and we gotta be i mean we have to be careful because we have the power to to you know empower or the power to crush and whether yeah, she was doing however she was doing it you know she, mm -hmm. it worked for you and so yeah that's it that's a good kind of angle on that um mm -hmm. here's the part that i'm really excited about so okay you you got your book. It's 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 with the publisher, uh, with mm -hmm. our publisher Road to Awesome, and Dr. Darren Pepperd. Um, I'm going to let you share the title and kind of what the book is about, and kind of kind of who you want to reach with it because I I can't wait to get my hands on it. So let's let's tell everybody about that book. All right. So my book is called Lead with Hope: A System of Self Efficacy, and the intended audience is educators, um, specifically. Um, all educators, but I think even more specifically educational leaders. 
Um, yeah. And, you know, what is it that we need in education more than anything else right now? And in my opinion, that is hope. And yeah. that what that means to me is that we have to have willpower and way power to find a way to a better future. And I think Lead with Hope provides um, a system of self-efficacy. Uh, the word hope is an acronym for the system of self-efficacy. And for me, it's simply habits, an optimistic outlook, passion, purpose, and perseverance, and then excellence. And in my life, both professionally and personally, that system of self-efficacy is what it has taken for me to find success. And through my book, I talk a lot about that acronym and that system, but the bookends for each chapter is self-awareness and self-reflection. And I believe that that's where it all begins. It all right. starts with self-awareness and we have to understand who we are and know where we've been so that we can figure out where we're going. That's right. That's yep. spot on. I love that. Yeah. And you can't lead lead others well unless you're leading yourself well. Exactly. So this book helps you to create your own system of self-efficacy in an, in, um, in an effort to, uh, you know, become more self-aware, develop a system of self-efficacy and pay it forward. Yes. I'm so glad you said that because I think, again, that self-awareness and that reflection part, mm -hmm. we as educators, I think as people in general, but especially in the education realm, it gets so, I mean, we just bypass it because of all this, you know, task and things and the, I mean, you know, from the administrative end, there's yeah. it's a never ending stream of things that you have to deal with and do. And, mm -hmm. you know, it's just that, if, I mean, you're, I mean, you're spot on. If, if we can't be our best self, then mm -hmm. we can't be our best for others. And if we're not taking care of each other, then how can we take care of the kids? And so yeah. it's just a, a ripple effect, and it does start within each and every single one of us. And yeah. thank you, Brandy, for sharing that about your book and, and being vulnerable tonight and, and sharing your story um, mm -hmm. with your brothers um, and how that has really empowered you to to be an educator and to see the good and, and to be a relationship builder. And um, I like what you said there at the very end. We have to have willpower and way power. Mm -hmm. um, and that starts with that hope. And so yeah. I hope that, that the educators that are out there, that are listening to you tell your story and, and tell about your book. Um, we'll, we'll, we'll just grab a hold of that hope and, um, tell, tell our listeners, um, website, social media, mm -hmm. um, how can they get in touch with you if they want to find out more about Dr. Brandy Kelly and, and leading with hope and, all that all that jazz okay so i have a website it's leadwithhope.net and on my website you will learn a little bit more about me i um, do some blogging for teach better so some of my articles are linked on there if you want to read more of my awesome. writing um, you can also subscribe to my monthly newsletter my monthly newsletter provides three uh, tips or three ideas around self-efficacy and self-awareness two quotes and one question. So I want to encourage everybody to subscribe to my monthly newsletter. And finally, you can find me at, I guess it's still called Twitter. I'm really not sure what to call it these days, but it's at JBMR Kelly. So Twitter awesome. at JBMR Kelly. Yep. Awesome. And so leadwithhope.net. Yes. Okay. And I'm, I'm just going to challenge everybody listening to this podcast to go to leadwithhope.net and subscribe um, uh, to Brandy's newsletter. I know I'm gonna do it as soon as I get done uh, with this show. Um, and Brandy, I just uh, thank you for taking the time. Out of, I know the school's getting ready to start, or I don't know if it's already started there for you. Yeah, we still we have about a week. Six, yeah, go, we start we, the 16th. Yeah, we've got teachers come back the 16th and we start the yeah. 23rd. So we've been back since the second trying to fix them fix all the schedules and all that kind of stuff. But um, mm -hmm. the, our master schedules change every day, seems like. But, um, you know, thank you for taking the time out of this busy time yeah. of the year um, to be on here. And um, I'm so happy that we've connected um, mm -hmm. through Road to Awesome. I, I can't wait to do more stuff and collaborate together. Um, and again, yeah. you guys that are listening in, um, leadwithhope.net, 
Um, Brandy's book is going to be Lead with Hope, a system of self-efficacy, um, and continue to hold on and, and just keep that hope alive because you got to be your best self so we can help each other and we can be our best for kids because those relationships, like Brandy said, is the incredibly important to the learning process. That's the magic, um, as mm-hmm. she shared um, in all of, her, all of the stories that she was sharing tonight. That's what kind of all comes back to is those relationships are so important. So Brandy, again, Absolutely. thank you for being with us tonight. Kip, thank you. You've been a gracious host and I appreciate the opportunity to share my story. Um, and I just wanna encourage your audience to share their story. Um, you never know who you're gonna reach, who you're gonna impact and um, life is short. So let's enjoy the ride. That's right. And it's, thanks, that, thanks again. I mean, you you hit on all the things I love. It's like, share your story, guys. Your stories, <laughs> yep. your stories matter. They, they Absolutely. really do. Keep doing mm-hmm. what you're doing for kids. Keep climbing. Keep turning your struggles to strength. Find that secret sauce and dish it out to everybody you see. Uh, and just see, hear, and love those people around you. So until next time. This podcast is a proud member of the Teach Better Podcast Network. Better today, better tomorrow, and the podcast to get you there. Explore more podcasts at teachbetter.com slash podcasts, and we'll see you at the next episode. Hey, we appreciate you listening to our podcast. Let's connect and impact lives together. Leave me a comment on this episode or find me on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube at The Secret Sauce with Kip Schubert. We would be honored if you would share this episode on your social media. Continue to share your story. It matters. Reach back over that mountain. Every educator, every student needs to feel loved, heard, and valued. So dish out that secret sauce and be that Sherpa to guide others to the summit. Till next time, let's stay all in and all together.